Oh, thanks a lot, you guys. Uh, Kevin, start with pretty good year so far. Your thoughts on uh, on the season? Yeah, it's it's been good. I've been pleased. I mean, we've been we've been in the playoffs every event, and you know that's what you want to do. You want to be in contention. We've lost a, a few finals. Be nice to you know be nice to to win an event here, but but like I said, um, you want to be in the playoffs every week, and so we've been cons- consistent that way. And you know, I feel like we. We still got quite a bit of room to improve. So, uh, yeah, encouraged for sure. Well, you know, two two pretty quiet guys, Tyler, to uh, to have on the same to have at the tea head. Um, I guess how did you get together? How did this uh, how did this work? Um, yeah, you, you say two, but really it's four in my opinion. Um, yeah, we're a really quiet team, and uh, kind of came together shortly after the Briar, I guess, and um, it's. Uh, yeah, good fit so far. Three finals is is uh, nothing to turn your nose at. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think we've seen the best from this team yet. So it's nice to know that there's a lot of improvement left when we're we're doing well so far. But uh, yeah, excited to see what the future holds. Well, Tyler brought up a point about having uh, maybe four quiet people. I brought up the point of two, but yeah, you're probably right. Um, a chemistry on the team. Now you've been with lots of teams over the years, Kevin. Like, how do you feel about this this crew? Yeah, it's good. Uh... I like it. It's it's complete 180 from my old team. That's for sure. I had uh, I had some mouth pieces on there, and it, <laughs> it wouldn't stop. But um, you know, I just think uh, different dynamic. We're we're still getting used to it. Um, probably, yeah. Uh, sometimes need to find a way to communicate a little more. But we're we're still we're still figuring that out. And and uh, it, it like Tyler says, it, it it seems to be working. And just a little little tweaking here and there. And I think we'll get to where we want to be. Tyler, talking about uh, you winning three national championships in junior back to back to back, and actually could have been four, but you decided not to play um, that year. I guess I'd, I'd just like to hear, rather than playing with a young team, like bringing a team you know of your age, why did you decide to play with a, a veteran uh, skip? Yeah, I feel like it's a pretty uh, easy answer. You know, if if you can have an opportunity at my kind of age to to learn from one of the best and um, learn from that, I, I think for my future development, that's going to be extremely beneficial. Kevin, uh, let's look at the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> we were just talking about Tyler being uh, young and just at a junior. You're at the other end. Um, I'd kind of like to hear from you um, thoughts on bringing a young player on and then your motivation to be able to, uh, you know, to, to give it your best still. Yeah, I mean, I think it's – I think he – Tyler fits in at a kind of perfect time for, for me, especially, you know, I'm getting towards maybe probably my last go around. Who knows? I mean, if, if you keep doing well, it gets, it gets harder to quit, but, um, you know, I'm, a, I'm approaching it like that. And so putting my all into it and, uh, just brings, uh, the freshness and someone young that, you know, hasn't got to play in all the big events. So for us to hopefully bring them along, um, the three of the three of us have, have played in a lot of big events, so um, that's fun. Hopefully, we can we can get to them all and 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 win a bunch of them, and and just having someone young and um, excited to play all the time is is a good uh, good fit for I think where the rest of us are at. So you mentioned bringing them along. So I, what what does that mean actually with a young player as young as what Tyler is? Like what, because um, you and I have thrown the rock together, so I, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I can see what's what's going on with uh, just a youthful, uh, really good athlete, but young. What does uh, coming along mean to you? Um, you know, I, I just think it's it's a it's a bit of a jump from obviously juniors to the to to the slams, and then really to trying to win these consistently like there's the the top teams these days um you know there's a few few from europe and a few from canada and there it, it, it's hard so um i think it's just getting to getting to the big events and competing and hopefully making playoffs and and winning a few of them um you've got a kind of a unique situation i think kevin where you have two righties and two lefties on the team and of course uh, you throw out of each hack a lefty throws out of a different hack than a righty. Um, line calling, first of all, is it maybe a little tricky? What's your thoughts on line calling with uh, two righties, two lefties? Yeah, it's probably been a 
bit of a struggle sometimes and just one of those things that'll take take a lot of reps and, and a lot of events. Um, we've spent a lot of time trying to work on trying to get similar lines of deliveries so the so the rocks react the same and and obviously you would know that you know that makes it so much easier to to call line and um we're getting there uh it is it is different i mean i have played with with the lefty before in in mark kennedy so a bit used to that but having two and um we don't all throw it the same yet so it's been a it's been a work in progress, but um, like I said, that's where I think to have the year we've had so far with still what I see a lot of room to keep getting better on, on things like that. Um, very excited. Tyler, uh, have you been sort of maybe surprised even a little bit with uh, the amount of work being done with your team as far as, to Kevin's point, line of delivery and uh, trying to get the tangents somewhat similar between you and Brad and Kark and Kevin? Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit. Um, but uh, in terms of work put into the game, not so much. We got to, in, in juniors, work with some of the um, more elite athletes and, and learn from them growing up to kind of um, make that transition a little bit more smooth. And we, we knew what the work that was kind of being put into the game. But uh, yeah, I've never played with a lefty um, myself. So it's been You've a lot of... played with a, another one? No, no. Oh, is that right? So I'm, okay. I'm tripping over Brad's broom all the time <laughs> when he's sliding out. And I get the struggle that the right-handed players feel now. But um, no, it's been good and going good. And, and uh, yeah, we're working hard to, to make it make it all work smoothly. Kevin, I want to go back in time a little bit with uh, with you curling out of Yellowknife and coming within a whisker of, of winning the Canadian Junior. Then you moved to Calgary. I want one thing I was thinking about is with uh, with your brother Jamie. Was there a time where he might have thought about coming or may, uh, to uh, moving south and be uh, be able to curl competitively? Yeah, I mean he 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 was down south for a bit, and um, we played together maybe a year. It wasn't. We were both kind of busy, university, um, he was school too, so just some close close events uh, close to Calgary. So, um, you know, for him, he just had too good an opportunity to, to go back for, for his career, and, um, and he, I'm sure he's happy with that. And, and for myself, it was, I knew if I went back, then you know, really the, the curling career to where I'd want to get to. It's just not not um, available up there with the remoteness and the travel required. So, uh, you know, we, we had a few couple of years of, of fun. I mean, we, we got to provincials a couple of times, had, had some good runs, but, I mean, back then it was obviously so hard to. I'm pretty sure we've played you a few times there too. So. <laughs> But um, no, everyone's where they they needed to be. But um, it was fun to play for a year or two out of juniors with them. Uh, Tyler, um, arguably the best junior career of anybody in the last a very very long time, if ever. Um, and I just like to hear from your side of things as far as uh, strategically being able to play with a veteran skip. Karik mentioned to me um, we were just sitting around BSing at my place and um, with Botcher who Carr curled with for so many years, very few rocks in play, like, or not as many. And he said with Kevin, like, holy cow, there's rocks. All, there's always rocks in play there. You know, we can give up a three, but we'll get another one back. And it's just a different way from your side of things, being a, a really top young skip and now having a chance to learn from one of the best ever. Um, your thoughts on that going forward, because no doubt in your mind, you'll be skipping again at some point. Right. Um, yeah. It's funny. Cause I, I think in juniors, I had a very, similar style of play with just chucking everything in play and making something happen with that. Um, but, uh, yeah, playing with Kevin, it's kind of interesting that you say that, uh, back in juniors, we were probably a team that played more men's tour events at a very young age than, than most people. And it, it's kind of, um, translating into my men's career now playing with older players to kind of learn from them back in juniors. We were trying to learn from the older players and get kicked off the sheet and four ends to learn as quick as we can. And, and now that I'm in men's, I'm, I'm trying to learn from the best as well. So being one of the top young guys coming up, um, the sport of curling, 
Do you see any changes that you'd love to see um, as you grow forward? I need a minute to think on that, actually. <laughs> that was apparently a good question. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you're going to be one of the leaders in the game going forward. Right. You know, and uh, and where, how to grow the game, where you see it going, and changes you might, uh, might want. I think changes are, are always needed in any sport, just the way that players develop and the youth are always getting better. Um, and uh, it, it's kind of turning into a, a, a young person's game as much as no one probably may want to admit it. Um, but uh, yeah, I think changes are always needed. And I think the, the slums especially are doing a good good job at kind of um, playtesting a couple of rules with uh, kind of starting with the no tick and all that. Um, I don't know of any rules in the future that I'd like to see, but uh, I'm, I'm confident that uh, the slums are probably going to be the ones to kind of play test it and see what works best. I want to ask this one. We make, we may edit this out. I'm not sure. But um, lately with the uh, carving, mm-hmm. um, it used to be, of course, you put as much pressure straight down the broom handle as possible and sweep. You know, and, and, and be it at 60 degrees or whatever uh, at the time, it used to be across the face of the rock, whatever. Um, now, though, with carving, the, the, the top players tend to extend further away from the body, increasing the torque on the lower part of the broom. And there's been some brooms that are snapping, not just, on, not just with Brad and Carrick, but in the game. It's just, um, I'd love to, love to hear your thoughts on, I guess, the, the future of where you see that going like, i know it's a pretty and right. that's a deep question yeah. but but it's only happened recently where the, the 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 strength of the sweeper has got crazy and uh so where do you see that going like i maybe explain a little bit about what has happened with your team right. um because of the strength of your front end yeah it's it's interesting because um just seeing the way sweeping has developed over the years watching some old shots and you're seeing them call on for line and they're they're carving it into the <laughs> into the rock so um I'm not convinced anyone really has it overly figured out yet. Uh, I I wouldn't be surprised if there's some more stuff that's discovered over the next 10, 20 years. Um, but uh, for now, we're we're just working with what we know. And and yeah, it's it's uh, interesting having some really strong sweepers. Um, going back to when we were talking about line calling, I've blown a few just from the strength of the sweepers and not being used to how much they can hold or carve a rock and. Um, yeah, it's uh, just a constant work in, work in progress and, and learning. Is there any concern with the carbon fiber used today? Is it strong enough, Kev, with the, with the sweepers? It seems to be that with the carving, because you want a long stroke, the, the sweeper goes further away from their body, increasing the angle of the broom shaft and, and, uh, and the broom shaft uh, failing, just simply because of strength. Nothing wrong with the carbon fiber. Yeah, I mean, it's just getting to the point where... The game has changed and the sweepers are, are that much stronger and maybe what has worked in the past doesn't work as far as equipment sometimes doesn't work for for some people it, it's hard to tell I mean if those if brooms get kind of nicked up and travel or something they just need the tiniest little crack and you and you don't know that that could be affecting it but um it's it's hard to put a hard to put a finger on because you know there there are a lot of good sweepers out there and um you'd think it should be happening more if if it wasn't if the equipment wasn't strong enough so i'm not sure but um like tyler says i i think it's i don't think anyone has it figured out yet and everyone's still learning and i think you know sometimes what people are doing might not even necessarily be be helping there's a lot of unknowns Tyler one one more thing and then we'll let you guys uh, go here um you show a lot of interest in mixed doubles um where do you see your play going forward in four person and mixed doubles because uh, obviously it's becoming a very busy season yeah and now I've I've been home only a couple weeks this year just being on the road so much with uh mixed doubles training weekends men's it it uh clogs up pretty good but uh I really like mixed doubles playing with Rachel has been a lot of fun this year and um yeah not a whole lot bad I can say about doubles it's it's a lot of fun and and I think it's really good for the um maybe some of the other countries where curling isn't so popular it's a lot easier to find one player to commit to the game than 
than three others in a, a regular team. So it's it's kind of nice to see some of the um, countries like maybe Estonia, for example, having a really strong mixed doubles team where it may be a little harder to find a, a full team to commit. Sure. Do you think there's any advantage, I'll ask both of you guys this, but Tyler first, uh, any advantage to playing mixed doubles when it comes to four-person curling uh, with the skill sets that are needed? Yeah, I think it's really helped my uh, kind of hack weight touch kind of game. Um, but uh, kind of growing up, skipping most of the time, I think doubles was a big reason why I kind of trained my sweeping a little bit more. And um, that was probably one of my biggest takeaways is the, the sweeping aspect of it. But uh, for, for sure, the, the touch game is I can contribute quite a bit to the doubles as well. Yeah, Kevin, I'd like to ask you the same question before we let you go here about uh, mixed doubles and maybe the, uh, the assets needed for mixed doubles. And uh, can that help in a four-person curling game? Yeah, I mean, I obviously don't have uh, a lot of experience at it. Um, to me, it, when I have played it, it's just about like a different sport sometimes. Um, but but yeah, I mean, you do throw a lot of the touch shots to the center and not, not as many kind of run backs. And it, it, it's got to it's gotta help your sweeping, I would think, as well, just, just getting the reps and the... It is fast paced, like you gotta think um a lot quicker, I think, than than the four person game and it, it's always go, go, go. And I mean like for, especially for someone uh young like Tyler, I mean to get out there, play top top curlers, because there is a lot of top top curlers playing it, um can do nothing but help you. And now your thoughts on uh Last question. Your thoughts at the uh, world or Olympic level being able to do both? Hmm, that's a that's a tough one. I mean, being selfish, if I was if I was there and and say for the four person and and um, he was there, I'm I'd have some concerns over just the the demanding schedule and just the I don't know, using up, using up his brain power, just, you know, with the pressure and just, uh, of the Olympics, um, it would be hard for someone to convince me that playing in that would, would help, help your four person team if you're transitioning right into that right after, but it's all, all speculation. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much, you guys. Appreciate Thanks it. For